Okay, so uh, review of factoring. Polynomials. After we view, review uh, factoring polynomials, we will look at factoring um, quadratics. In other words, solving using factoring, so we quadratic equations by factoring. And uh, then we're going to look at rational expressions. So these are applications. Applications. These are applications of factoring polynomials. But that's later, after we finish this document that I would like to review with you. So factoring polynomials, there are three different situations. And you see them here. These are the three situations. Once you understand this table that our, our, our graph um, that I created, uh, then you'll have zero difficulties with factoring. Okay. As you see, there are three different situations. When we factor a binomial, when we factor a trinomial, when we factor a polynomial. They cannot be combined. This is not that, this is not this, and so on and so forth. They are completely three different categories, and they have to be treated completely differently. Not the beginning part. The beginning part is the same. Once you go through all these questions, then you will separate. It's either a binomial or a trinomial or a polynomial. So a binomial, a trinomial, and a polynomial. Three different situations. I'm going to start reviewing binomials first, and then trinomials, and then polynomials. With examples from here, um, we're not going to finish all this document. This is a you know, couple of weeks of work. But we're going to do everything from here, but not each and every example. And you can work on them if you want, and you can show them to me, or we can throughout the uh, rest of the semester, we can, you can ask any questions. I'm not gonna, we're not going to have time to do all of them. But I'd be more than happy to go back to any of those if you have questions. Okay, so factoring binomials. Factoring is the first review. Binomials. Nothing new for you, but I'd like to go over a few examples just to make sure that this is clear. So, when you give me a binomial to factor, the first question I ask myself is, what is it? Well, we haven't talked about anything else, so it must be at this point, it must be a binomial. In the second, the second question I have for myself is, is it in descending order? If it is not in descending order, I will rearrange it. In number three, so if it's not in descending order, it will be rearranged. In number three, does it have a greatest common factor? If it does, we have to pull it out. Question number four, negative leading coefficient. If the leading coefficient is negative, we'll pull that out as well. And then in five, special products. <coughs> there are four special products for binomials. Here they are. A squared plus B squared a squared minus b squared, a cubed plus b cubed, and a cubed minus b cubed. Notice what I just did without telling you. I just went through these steps. That's all I did. What is it? It's a binomial. It's in descending order. Greatest common factor. Negative leading coefficient. This, these two can be lumped into one step. The greatest common factor and the negative leading coefficient. And then, since it's a binomial, these are the options. Or is not factorable. 
Difference of squares, sum of squares. Difference of cubes, sum of cubes. Do we know any of the these special products, what they equal to? Last time we talked about this. Can anyone give us the answer? That's our first agreement. Go back to the agreement page that we signed last time. And please tell me how we factor the difference of squares. Very important to remember this. Should it be in your notes or on the handout? Anyone? Yes? Yes? That's it. So moving forward, we have to remember this, otherwise we will not be able to make progress. This happens to be a sum of squares, not factorable. To be exact, using integers. But that's what we are trying to say. It's not factorable. Now this, anyone remembers the sum and the difference of cubes? How they factor? Okay, the sum of cubes, a plus b, a squared minus ab plus b squared, and the difference of cubes is a minus b, a squared plus ab plus b squared. So notice the sequence of signs. If we factor the sum of cubes, the binomial has to have the sum. And the trinomial in the middle, we never talk about this, this is always positive. The last term is always positive. So the middle coefficient will be negative. If we factor the difference of cubes, the binomial has the difference, so this is always a binomial and this is always a trinomial. So the difference of cubes, or the sum of cubes, factors into a binomial times a trinomial. So if we factor the difference, the binomial has the difference and the trinomial has the sum. One more time, the sequence of signs either plus, plus, minus, or minus, minus, plus. That's it about the binomial. So now let's go to the, the other handout and let's choose. So here are the examples for the binomial. Please choose, or I will. 4z squared minus 25. Very good. So 4z squared minus 25. Skipping any of these steps will make your life more difficult. First question is, what is it? What will you say is it? It's a binomial. Is it in descending order? Yes. Does it have a greatest common factor? No, 4 and 25 don't have common factors. So these two terms don't have a common factor. Um, is there a negative leading coefficient? Is there a negative leading coefficient? Leading coefficient is the coefficient since it's in descending order, this is the leading coefficient. If it's negative, I have to factor out negative 1. If it's not negative, I leave it alone. Is it negative? No. So the last question I have, which one works, if any? Since it's a difference, I have to think in, the, in these terms, either this or this. But Bob already told us that this is a perfect square and this is a perfect square. I will not be able to use the difference of cubes. So then what do I get? Once you say the difference of squares, then you will give me two binomials. Which binomials will you give me? Yes, 2z. Indeed. Indeed. Awesome. 
difference of squares factors into a minus b times a plus b or a minus a plus b times a minus b. Very good. Okay, let's look at uh, 1 over 27 minus x cubed. First question is, what is it? And the answer is, it's a binomial. Is it in descending order? Unfortunately not. So it has to be re rearranged. Next, is there a common fra factor, greatest common factor to these two? No, x cubed and 1 over 27 don't have common factors. Is there a negative leading coefficient? Yes. yes. I have no choice but factor it out. Good. So what is left in parentheses? Very good. So now I'm down to these options. So the question is, which one will I select? I have again two options. Is it difference of squares or is it difference of, difference of cubes? Since this one cannot be a different, this cannot be a, a perfect square, there is nothing that I can square to get x cubed, the same thing here, then we you will say that this is the difference of very good. Once you say the difference of cubes, then you will give me a binomial times a trinomial. What is the binomial? What do I cube to get x cubed? And let's maybe maybe we should um, talk about the sequence of signs first, so we don't make a mistake. And of course, the last one is always positive. So, which term do, will I cube to get x cubed? What do I cube to get x cubed? What do you think? Anyone? Perfect. Now the next question is, what do I cube to get 1 over 27? But 1 over. Right, because 3 cubed will be 27, not 1 over 27, right? So it's 1 over 3. Is that clear, Jay? Perfect. Okay. So now the pattern says, look, look here so you don't forget. You square this and you put it here. You square this and you put it here. And you multiply them and put them in the middle. So what is the first term in the trinomial then? Very good. What is the last term in the trinomial? Correct? <clears throat> it's 1 over 3 times 1 over 3, right? Or 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 over 9. What do we have in the middle? The product of these two. But remember, we had to put the signs first. So forget about the sign. The sign is already done. What is the product? Would you agree with 1 third x? Yes? So this is it. That's that's why that's why the sequence of signs first negative the binomial has the same sign and the trinomial has to have the opposite minus minus plus or plus plus minus so careful with that put the signs first so you don't um, mess it up okay let's look at uh, one more. Uh, negative 1 over 16 plus x to the fourth. Please remember to go through all these steps. What type of polynomial is it? Very good. Is it in descending order? No, but now, now it is. Does it have a common factor, greatest common factor, these two terms? Can we pull out anything from these two terms? Can we? But this one doesn't have two. It 
should have had one half or something. But this one doesn't have anything. So no greatest common factors. Negative leading coefficient? No. So now I'm asking myself what, do, what works here, if anything. I see a difference. Again, I'm looking at either difference of squares or difference of cubes. Which one is potential? Excellent. Once you say the difference of squares, then we're going to get ready to binomials. Binomial, binomial. One with plus and one with minus. So what could that be? Yes, squared. But two is not one over two, right? One fourth. And x squared. Very good. Can this be further factored? <coughs> it's the sum of squares, which we, ca we cannot factor using integers. But can this be further factored? Because once I'm asked to factor, I'm asked to, uh, to factor completely. Can I further factor this? I'm using the same formula. Again, the difference of squares. So I copy the first which is x squared plus 1 fourth. I can't do anything. But this is, again, a product of two binomials. Because it's a difference of squares. Plus and minus. What? Very good. That's it. Yep, this one had three different factors. You get partial credit on the test um, yes, you will always get partial credit if you are on the right track, always. But um, when we factor, we're asked to factor completely. Yeah. Yes, I always give partial credit. Of course, it makes sense. Okay, trinomials. Trinomials are the most difficult ones. So let's take a look at same sequence. What is it? Is it in descending order, greatest common factor, negative leading coefficient? And although we have only two special products that we discussed last time, I hope you have that form, uh, we do have two more options here that are slightly more difficult than the special products. So let's write the sequence again. One, two, three, and four are the same. What is it? Descending order, greatest common factor, negative leading coefficient. Same. Same as before. But now we have five special products. There are only two, but we also have six and seven as options if a special product is not, not applicable. So I'm going to write the special products from last time. And you tell me what they are equal to. Take a moment and look. I hope moving forward you are going to remember these. That's why we practice them right now. Very good. Awesome. A plus B. Everything squared. Great job. And? Of course. Thank you. So if these don't work, one or the other, the next option would be 1 as the leading coefficient, x squared plus bx plus c. We're going to talk about it when we get to it. And the last option, which is obviously the most difficult one, is when the leading coefficient is not 1. Is anything but one. And that is the most difficult one. Okay, so we are um, at the bottom of this first page. We're talking about factoring a trinomial. So we're going to go through these problems. And then the last one, factoring a polynomial. And then we're going to uh, choose some um, um, factoring, um, um, solving quadratic equations by factoring. Okay? So. Let's say we start with the first one. y squared plus 121 minus 22y. OK, 
back to our strategy. First, we have to identify what is it. Is it a binomial? Is it a trinomial? Or is it a polynomial, which means four terms or more? Trinomial. Very good. So it's a trinomial. Is it in descending order? No. No. So it needs work. And here it is. y squared minus 22y plus 121. Do the, all three terms have a greatest, greatest common factor? When you look at these three terms, do they have a common factor? No. Uh, is there a negative leading coefficient? No, the leading coefficient is 1. So finally, I'm down to special products right here. Is, is it potentially, is it possible that this is a special product? And if it works, which of these two? Not both, of course. Is it the first one or the second one that I will try? I can't try the first one because it has plus and this has minus. So is that clear? That's how we identify which one we can think of. So we cannot think of that. We have to think of this. Perfect. So now my next step is to identify A and B. So I already know that I'm working on this situation. So what squared is this? Good. What squared is this? 11. That's okay. Notice one thing. I didn't even look at the middle coefficient, middle term. I even covered it. And now I'm going to ask you, if you, if I ask you to expand this, what will be the middle term? Remember last time we talked about this? First term squared minus 2 times the first times the second. So what will be the middle middle term of this expansion plus the second term squared? What will be the middle term? Negative. Please, please multiply 2 by 11. 22 and times y? Negative 22y. If the middle term here is negative 22y, then I'll say yes. If the middle term here is not negative 22y, I'll say that's wrong. Ah, okay. So that's a yes. So what I'm pointing out here is the following. You come up with these two from the first and the last. But if you don't check the middle term, it doesn't necessarily mean that this equals that. So here's an example for you. What if I have y squared minus 6y plus 121. You will say, huh, that's easy. It's y minus 11 squared. And <laughs> not so fast. Because the middle term here is negative 22y, and the middle term here is not negative 22y. So this cannot be correct. So just checking and looking at the first two term, first and the last, the saying, OK, they are perfect squares. This is positive. This is negative, because this must be positive on all of them, right? This must be positive. And it is. It's positive. The last term is positive. Both are perfect squares. Let's go ahead and write y minus 11 squared. That's not good enough. You still have to check the middle term. Do you understand the difference? So please remember that. OK, so let's look at another example. Uh, let's look at B. Stop me if you have questions. Do you remember this from the previous course? If you remember it in a different way, I'm fine. You don't have to switch to my, my method. But I think that this is perfectly structured into binomials, trinomials, and polynomials, and they're not altogether mixed um, with no, no order. That's my opinion. OK, so here's another one for you. Negative uh, 3x squared minus 12x minus 12. The first question is, what type of polynomial is it? I have to identify it correctly because, as you see, look at the strategy for binomial, look at the strategy for trinomial, and a totally different one for polynomials. So I have to know which category is it. Is it a binomial or a trinomial or a polynomial? And you can say they're all polynomials. And I'll say, yes, that's true, too. But two terms is a binomial, three terms is a trinomial, and anything above, just polynomial. 
So what do you think about this? Binomial, trinomial, or polynomial? We agree it's a trinomial, correct? One, two, three terms, correct? Good. Is it in descending order? Uh, is there a greatest common factor? Yes. Is there a negative leading coefficient? Yes. So let's do it in one step. What will you pull out, including negative sign? Very good. And what is left in parentheses? And by the way, how many terms will you give me to write in parentheses for sure? Yes. If we start with three, I have to have three in parentheses. Very good. Thank you. So what will you tell me to write in parentheses? Yes? Sign? Careful. Very good. Plus? Good. Careful. If I write minus 4, I will never get back the, the starting point. Negative 3 times x squared is negative 3. Right. So negative 3 times x squared, negative 3 times 4x, and negative 3 times 4 will give us that. Okay? So now the question is, how do I factor that? And like I did before, I always check whether the first and the last are perfect squares. Are the first and last perfect squares? So you would expect what? And keeping in mind that this is a positive, what do you expect? And the sign? If the middle term is positive, then the term then positive in there. If the middle term is negative, then it's negative. But what will be the uh, middle term for this expansion? If you are asked to expand x plus 2 squared, what will be the middle term? I want to write it here. Four. Yes, 2 times the first times the second, which is 4x. If the middle term here is 4x, then I'll say it's correct. If the middle term here is not 4x, I'll say it's not correct, but it is. So I'll say check. Do you understand what we're trying to do here? Yes? Do we need more examples? Uh, what are you going to expect to do if, if the middle term is not four? I can say there was another number. Uh, we, have, we have other options, or it's not factorable. Yeah. OK, let's move on to, uh, let's say, m squared plus 13m plus 42. We're asked to factor this. So. What is it? How many terms does it have? What type of polynomial? It's very good. It's a trinomial. Is it in descending order? Yeah. Greatest common factor in all three? No. no. A negative leading coefficient? No. Perfect. So now I'm asking myself, because that's the next step, I have to try special products. Is this a perfect square? Yes. Is the 42 a perfect square? Nope. So then none of these work. I'm checking the, lo the next possibility. Is 1 the leading coefficient? Yes. So I'm trying this option. What does that mean? What is that option? That option says to look for two numbers whose product is 42 and whose sum is 13. Notice that I take 42 with a sign and 13 with a sign. So I'm looking for two numbers whose product is 42 and whose sum is 13. The same numbers. If I say it again, um, 7 and, very good, 7 and 6. So I write m plus 6 and m plus 7. In any order you like, it doesn't matter. So 7 times 6 is 42, yes. 7 plus 6 is 13, yes. Now if you want to check, how will you check? It takes 10 seconds to check m times m, m squared, m times 7, 
7m plus 6m is 13m and plus 42. You can always go back and check very easily. Any questions? So here, a special product was not applicable. But luckily, the leading coefficient was 1. So we were able to factor. This is always the product of the numbers we determine, and this is always the sum of the numbers we need to determine. So let's look at uh, x squared minus 20 minus x. What type of polynomial is it? Good. Is it in descending order? Very good. So this is x squared minus x minus 20. Is there a greatest common factor in all three? Yeah, but one is not a factor. I cannot really, but you're right. Yes. Uh, is uh, the leading coefficient negative? No. My next question is, can I use a special product? I hope for a special product, always. Is this a special product? Is the first term a perfect square? Yes, but is the last term, negative 20, a perfect square? No. And it's, first of all, it's negative. I didn't even talk about it. Very good. So now, I am trying to find two numbers whose product is, can anyone dictate the product? Yes, awesome, with a sign. Very good. And whose sum is? So, negative 1. So now the question is this. Since the product of two numbers is negative, the signs of those numbers have to be opposite. One has to be positive and one has to be negative. That's how I determine the sign. The product is negative. One has to be positive and one has to be negative. Can we find two numbers whose product is negative 20? Very good. So it's x minus 5 and x plus 4. Be careful because the sum has to be negative 1. So therefore, 5 is negative and 4 is positive because both conditions have to be fulfilled, not the other way around. Do not write positive 5 and negative 4 because then you're not going to have a sum of negative 1. Is that clear? You only, you only need a second or two to uh, multiply those. OK, is this uh, method clear? When the leading coefficient is 1, can we move on to the last one? Do we need more examples from this type? Anyone? Do we need more examples from this type? Please say something. Is it a yes or a no? OK, perfect. Moving on. So let's take a look at 6y squared minus y minus 1. What type of polynomial is it? It is a trinomial. Perfect. I have to put my tent up. OK, perfect. It is a trinomial. Is it in descending order? Uh, greatest common factor in all three? No. Negative reading coefficient? No. Special product? Is the first term a perfect square? Is the last term a perfect square? So there is no, once you said no for the first one, I should just move on. Is the leading coefficient 1? The answer is I hope. No, nope. I always wish for a special product or leading coefficient 1. No, nope. it's a different story, so please pay attention. This is my suggestion for this. I'm still looking for two numbers whose product, because the leading coefficient is not 1, the, lead, the leading coefficient has to be taken into account. So the product now is 6 times negative 1, which is negative 6. In the past, it was the leading coefficient, it was 1, so I didn't need to do that. 
I'm still looking for two numbers whose sum is oops, whose sum is the same. That never changes. Is negative one. So this is the most difficult situation when the leading coefficient is not one and it's not a special product. So then the next step is I need to find two numbers whose product is negative six. Remember, if the product is negative six or negative, one has to be positive, one has to be negative, and whose sum is negative one. Negative 3 and positive 2. Awesome. Negative 3 and positive 2. Because the product is negative 6 and the sum is negative 1. Both conditions are fulfilled. But please pay attention to what happens next. I'm going to continue here. We will replace this term by these. 6y squared minus 3y plus 2y minus 1. You can say you're changing the problem. No. You gave me two correct answers. You gave me the answer of negative 3 and positive 2. You gave me two numbers. And now I can use these two numbers. When I add them, I get that. What I changed is the presentation. And now I'm going to factor by grouping. Factor by grouping. From the first two, please tell me what should I factor out. As if they are by themselves. What will I factor out? Greatest common factor of the first two terms. Three. And? Three, Good. What is left in parentheses? How many terms, first of all, how many terms will you give me? Two. Of course, you started with two, you have to give me two. Very good. So what is left in parentheses? Excellent, Morgan, thank you. Excellent. Please do not look at the other two terms. Please tell me what should I have coming out from the other two terms in parentheses, otherwise I can continue. I know what has to be there. What do I have to have in parentheses? Mandatory. A 2y minus 1. Exactly. If I don't, I can continue. Now I need two things from you. A sign and a factor. Ready? I need a sign and a factor. Bless you. What times 2y is 2y? What times negative 1 is negative 1? Yes. And the sign? Excellent. Now, look at these two terms and tell me which is the common factor that I need to pull out now. What is common to these two terms that now needs to go out? from this term and from this term. What do I pull out? What is common? There is an expression that is common to both. This is out. This is out. What is left from the first term? Then the sign. What is left from the second term? Excellent. Again, it takes you less than 10 seconds to check this. Let's do it. 2y times 3y, 6y squared. Positive 2y minus 3y, negative 1y, and negative 1 times 1, negative 1.